be distributed around. Yes? Is everyone happy with that? And that's it. Okay. Now what we find in the universe is that entropy tends, sorry, everything tends to the most probable arrangement. Okay. So it comes down and ultimately to that, you know, for the example, if I were to cut up that bit of paper, and I mean you can use these people to talk about the Bible or whatever, if I were to cut up that piece of paper, cut out all the individual letters on that bit of paper, and I were to throw them up in the air, what is the chance that they all fall down, miraculously form the exact same piece of paper? It all fall in the right position so everything was completely correct. Well, the chances are so small that it would just never happen in my lifetime. I could throw up those bits of paper many times as I want. They're never going to all flutter down and lay out perfectly to be that piece of paper there. And that's quite a small example. It's never going to happen. What's going to happen is a distribution, a random distribution, in this particular way. And that most probable outcome is the outcome we get. And that's what we find with all of our chemical and physical processes, that the most probable outcome is the result. Okay. Now, before we go any deeper in that, philosophically, let's just have a look at the actual numbers. So what we do is we say the delta S, which is our entropy change, and really we're talking delta S of the system, that equals the delta S of the reactants minus the delta S of the product, doesn't it? Yes? Have I got that right? Is it the other way around? Hang on, all we need to think... Yeah. Oh, by the way, I never, I never remember any of these rules. I always kind of do it by, um, do it by first principles. So I say, hang on a minute. If the entropy of the system, if the entropy of the reactants is, reactants this side here, the entropy of the reactants is greater than the entropy of the products, yes, then it's going to be a negative delta S change. So I kind of always do it like that. But what's the equation? Products minus reactants. Products minus reactants. So the interesting thing, oops, what have I done wrong there? The interesting thing, of course, is that the difference, one of the differences between entropy and enthalpy is that we cannot measure absolute enthalpies. We can only measure entropy changes. But the interesting thing with entropy is that we can, because we can do complex uh, mathematical fun uh, equations to calculate, uh, don't ask me how they do it. Well, I don't know, vaguely, but uh, what, what they do is uh, to cap you, you basically, you look at the number of, oh, it doesn't matter. <laughs> but fundamentally, you do exactly what I just said before. You take the amount of energy, number of packets of energy, and you look at the different places the energy can go, and that gives you a value for entropy. Okay. So you can calculate the molar entropies of four substances. And what, what that means is that you can calculate the total entropy for the products, and you can take away the total entropy for the reactants, and that will give you the entropy change to the system. Happy with that? Yeah. Right. Now, if the entropy change for the system is a drop, isn't that a bit of a worry? Yes, because no reaction that we know of, or no overall process in the universe, proceeds if there is a decrease in entropy in the universe. Okay. So, in order for a reaction to go, we have to have an overall gain in entropy of the universe. <laughs> But we also have this value too. And you may not have come across this before, but I hope you have. Delta S of the surrounding. And the delta S of the surrounding is equal to minus delta H over T. And that makes sense too, because remember, delta H is our heat energy. The more heat energy we have, the more entropy we have. Yes? And so delta H would be negative. So if we have a negative, negative makes a positive. If that's exothermic, exothermic means we'll have an increase in entropy of the surroundings. And the entropy change of the universe, or total entropy change, sometimes you'll see that just written as total. The total entropy change equals the delta S of the system plus the delta S of the surroundings. Okay, and that's it. All right? So, if you want to know whether a reaction could happen or not, not whether it does, because there's another factor too, isn't there? What's the other factor? The speed. The activation energy. So you can have a, rea a reaction uh, in which the overall entropy change in the universe is, is dramatically an increase. 
But it doesn't seem to happen. Why? Because it has a very high activation energy. So the rate is so slow. I haven't finished yet, by the way. Uh, I'm just going to get you free energy and then you can go. Um, ah, you're going. Guys, I'll only be literally about another three minutes, okay? Three minutes. Um, so, where are we? Uh, don't forget, sorry, these are still very important points. They love to ask about this. You know, you might say, you might find that Gibbs free energy is negative. We'll talk about that in just two seconds. But you might find that Gibbs free energy is negative, which of course means that the total entropy change is positive. But the reaction still doesn't go. And the answer is because the activation is very high. The rate of reaction is so slow that effectively it doesn't happen. Okay, so that's quite important too. But this ter this re this, these values tell you whether it can happen or not. Now, delta G equals delta H minus T delta S. Now, what's the point of the Gibbs free energy? Well, Gibbs free energy, as far as you're concerned, really, is just another way of finding the total entropy change of the universe. Or alternatively, depending on how your subject teacher, has, your particular chemistry teacher has taught it, you may have been taught this and not taught this. Has anyone not been taught this? Oh, you have. Okay, fine. The only reason I'm saying that is because they don't ask you, I don't know if you've noticed in any of your uh, IB questions, but they don't actually ever ask you to find the total entropy change. They only ever ask you to find a Gibbs free energy. But the Gibbs free energy is actually the same thing. It's, if, you, if you look at it, it's finding the same thing. And if the Gibbs free energy is negative, if that equals a negative value, then it means that the reaction is spontaneous. And uh, delta G being negative is the same as having a positive total entropy change of the universe. Okay. So why do people use Gibbs free energy and not do this? Well, the answer is because... The answer is, I suppose, because you've got delta H of the system and delta S of the system here. And then you don't have to worry too much about what's going on in the surroundings. So that's why people use delta G instead of using total entropy. Okay. Now, before we finish, there is one... You need, just need to practice the questions with these, really. There's nothing much else I can tell you, apart from one hugely important thing, which is where... People lose marks every so, single. Is that delta S on the end? Is that and delta H? Is that all the system? Yes, this is all the system. Delta H of the system, delta S of the system, and that's why in an IB this is important. This isn't the really important thing, but this is important. In an IB exam, whenever they talk about delta S, they are always talking about delta S of the system. When they talk about delta H, H, they are always talking about delta H of the system. Okay, so. Don't worry if you see delta S and you think, well, is that the system or the surroundings? The answer is it's always the system. Now, what is the really important point I'm going to make when you're calculating this, Kieran? What is the really important, make, important point that everyone always forgets? The temperature needs to be Kelvin. Okay, that is a really important point, but that is not the really important point. I know you know, because I've back, uh, drilled it into there. Uh, Delta S is in joules per Kelvin, not kilojoules per yes, Kelvin. Yes, exactly. This is the huge error. Please, please, please remember this. Please remember, the entropy is given in joules, and the enthalpy is given in kilojoules. Okay. Now, I mean, the rep, it's not just joules, of course. This is given in kilojoules per mole. Okay, pay attention. This is given in kilojoules per mole. The, entr the entropy is given in joules per per k per mole, okay? But the important point is, entropy is in joules and delta H is in kilojoules. And every single year, I mark papers and students muck that up because they just put the values in. They, they say, right, I've got 400 for my en entropy change and I've got 4,000, no, sorry, they say I've got 40,000 for my entropy change and I've got 4,000 for my enthalpy change and they just plug the values in. And of course, it's one of them is a thousand out. And it doesn't matter whether you convert <coughs> one into kilojoules, i.e. you convert your entropy into kilojoules, or you convert your enthalpy into joules by multiplying by a thousand, the other one by dividing by a thousand. It doesn't matter which way, around, which way you do it, uh, because your answer, your delta G, you will then give in joules or kilojoules. That's fine. But you must convert one of them. That's it, I think. We were told that if we ever made that mistake, we'd owe pizza.
the worst catch in the world. Have a good half term, guys. Have a day off. Because... Why would you get one of these?